Okay, today I will start discussing about uh, this section, which is for this law. So for this law is uh, the basic principle behind the transformer action. Okay, so uh, based on the for this law, voltage will be induced. Huh? Voltage will be induced uh, if flux passes through a turn of a coil of wire okay if we have a coil of wire and then we let's say uh, i have a coil of wire and then i am holding a magnet then what i'm doing is i i try to to move the magnet approaching that coil maknanya huh? kita dekatkan magnet tu kepada coil supaya uh, voltage akan induce Okay, voltage akan induce dalam coil itu. Itu maksud ya. Okay, so for this law is the basics of the transformer action. And then uh, voltage, ini dia punya theorem lah. Eh? Voltage will be induced uh, if the flux passes through a turn of a coil of wire. And then uh, that Voltage is directly proportional to the change of the flux. So this is this is the equation that represents the Faraday's law. As you can see, this is the change of the flux. Change of the flux. Huh? The rate of change of flux is directly proportional to the induced voltage in the coil of wire. So ada symbol juga kan? negative kat sini kan? Negative tu kembali kepada uh, Lenz law sebenarnya tapi untuk Faraday's law apa yang kita perlu tahu adalah uh, bila kita ada coil of wire and then kita uh, do something so using magnet for example so that there is a change in magnetic field so what happen is voltage will be induced okay so this is the equation of the Faraday's law then Let's say if we have n number of turns in the coil with the same amount of flux flowing in it. Okay. So basically, uh, for in actual or real world application, there is no 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 application that using one turn. Eh? Basically, we have hundred number of turns, thousand number of turns for the transformer windings, uh, for stator coil winding, for example. So Let's say we have n number of turns here, so we can modify uh, the equation, the Faraday's law equation to negative n d phi over d t. So n it n represents a number of turns of the coil. For example, if I have a, a core or uh, uh, iron core like this, I will make one single turn, second turn. Third turn, so and so on until several hundred of turns. Eh? So let's say we have hundred turns, so n becomes hundred. Okay. Then how about Lenz law? How about Lenz law? Okay. Lenz law is the direction of the build-up voltage in the coil is as such that if the coil was short-circuited. It would produce current that would cause a flux opposing the original flux change. Untuk memahami Lenz law ni, okay, let's have a look at this uh, handwriting sketch. Eh? Okay, so Lenz law kata apa? Dia nak oppose the flux change kan? Nak oppose the flux change. Uh, let's examine uh, this figure. Okay. Saya ada lukis tiga figure kat sini. Okay. Uh, we have a coil of wire wrap on something lah. Katalah ini bukan uh, uh, bukan iron core apa. Tapi lebih kepada mungkin uh, saya assume ini adalah uh, let's assume that this is, this happens inside the vacuum. Eh? In the vacuum. So that this This cylinder is basically uh, nothing, just a cardboard cylinder, for example, which is non-magnetized uh, material. Okay, 
so I do the windings like this and then I'm holding the uh, magnet here which is North Pole is facing toward the, this coil then I what I do uh, is I will approach this magnet okay I will move this magnet upward so that it will be close to that coil of wire so at that instant what happened is if we short circuit this wire we short circuit this wire meaning that what happened okay meaning that the current will be flowing lah ah bila dia jadi closed loop ataupun the circuit is complete the current will be flowing that flow of current which is the build up current is actually because of the this movement okey maknanya bila ada flux ke arah atas mana ada flux ke arah atas aliran current ini the flow of current will be make sure, will make sure that there is another flux huh? there is another flux try to oppose that change of that green flux maksudnya yang purple ini the flux will up dalam coil disebabkan change of this flux huh? change of the flux from that magnet begitu juga masa saya tarik okey untuk figure yang ketiga ni saya tarik uh, magnet tu ke bawah ya yeah. uh, i was holding this uh, magnet then at this instant number third, number 3 ya yeah, what happen is uh, i move this magnet downward move this magnet downward meaning that the flux direction is now to the downwards to the downwards huh? so what happen is the different direction of current will be flowing which is again trying to oppose that change of the flux ok maknanya bila saya tarik dia akan cuba nak nak tarik balik bila saya dekat tadi yang nombor 2 dia akan cuba nak tolak ok so, itu lah reaction dia lah ok apa yang berlaku dalam ni mengikut hukum uh, Lenz law dan Faraday's law ah, right So that is what happen. I hope you can imagine and understand lah. Okay, what happen when we do a uh, experiment like that? Okay, I hope that you can imagine what happened in that call. Right. So this is another the figure based on the textbook. Uh, based on that textbook. So explaining the same thing actually. So I think you can have a read about this uh, using uh, you can read this this slide what is describing by this slide but this this slide describes about uh, the phenomenon happen uh, that explain the Faraday's law and then Lenz law okay the same thing ah nanti saya akan share lah apa uh, like notes ah, yang saya conteng itu eh. now uh, we want to represent the equation of the Faraday's law and Lenz law ini okay uh, this equation we got we are going to expand into uh, li flat linkages huh? into the flat linkages how do we relate the flat linkages to the original equation of the Faraday's law okay let's say we have uh, i number of turns huh? maknanya uh, lilitan tu sebanyak n number okay n turns ah tapi yang ke i let's say n adalah 100 ah 1 hingga 100 katalah i tu yang ke 5 contohnya kan ha macam tu imagine that numbers ah harap you how do you can imagine ah okay this is mathematics ah okay so let's say that i number of turn turn yang ke i ni kita boleh katakan the induced voltage will be the change of i's flux ah flux yang ke i lah ok e i equals to d phi i over d t and then since we have n number of turns ok we have n number of turns so the total induced voltage will be from the first turns to n turns maknanya the sum of the first turns of induced voltage to n maknanya 
E1 tambah E2 tambah E3 tambah E4 E5 so and so on until En. Okay, so we can define the induced voltage is the sum of uh, number of turns punya voltage. Faham eh? Ha? EI ni setiap, setiap coil eh, setiap lilitan. Okay, kalau ada 200 lilitan, lilitan pertama voltage dia, lilitan kedua voltage dia, sehinggalah. Okay, so EI ni adalah yang ni, then we can just substitute this EI. Alright, and then uh, we can put the D over DT outside so that uh, we can separate this equation to this form. Okay, so induced voltage become the rate of change of all fluxes. Huh? Flux number one, flux number two, flux number three, flux, pa flux pada turn number four, flux pada turn number five, so and so on. Alright. So this equation, so this equation can be represented, can be represented in terms of flux linkages. Maksudnya, yang bahagian ini, okay, yang bahagian ini sebenarnya kita boleh uh, represent this term as flux linkages, huh? flux linkages, huh? which is lambda. We represent lambda as a flux linkages to represent this uh, Faraday's law equation. Okay, so flux linkages lambda tu apa? Adalah uh, flux bagi turn yang pertama, turn yang kedua, turn yang ketiga tambah semua sampai turn yang terakhir lah. Okay. Okay. So let me show another explanation in my lecture notes ah. So apa itu flux linkage ah? Saya ada tulis nota kat sini. Let's say I have this turn number 1 yang bawah sekali, turn number 1, turn number 2, turn number 3, turn number N atas sekali. So, I have number of turn, then we can do the same thing. This is another explanation lah using this figure, right? Until we have this equation, that, that part, okay? This part will be, we can represent this part using lambda, which is lambda is the flux linkages. So, it links together all of the fluxes. Ah, ini lagi jelas lah figure ni. Okay. So, ini flux untuk turn yang pertama. Okay. Tambah flux untuk turn yang kedua. Flux untuk turn yang ketiga. So and so on. Sampailah flux yang turn untuk yang ke end. Eh. Ah, yang ni bermula daripada atas. Eh. Yang bermula daripada atas. Tapi sama saja. Eh. Sama saja. Just uh, to understand that... Uh, Sebenarnya bergantung kepada turns lah. Kita assume vektor dia pun sama direction lah. Okay. So that is the, the assumption. That is why in industry, in order we want to make a perfect coil. So we want to make sure that dia punya windings ini semua dah sama saiz saja. Okay. Itu ciri-ciri uh, perfection lah. Uh, uh, Contohnya, bila you all, uh, kalau ada masa, boleh buka YouTube, uh, try Google, macam mana motor itu dibuat secara manual. Motor itu dibuat secara manual. These are the top results. Mana ni, kacau. Motor itu dibuat secara manual. Yang mana, kalau uh, ada engineer tu, uh, Mungkin uh, winding ini dia buat macam mana? Winding ini kan dia lilitkan secara manual. Ada yang guna mesin. Eh? Ada yang uh, kalau motor yang terlalu besar, biasanya dia buat secara manual. Orang yang akan lilitkan. So, masa lilitan itu dia akan make sure that uh, the winding is nearly perfect lah. To make sure that all of the vectors are aligned. Eh? Vectors of the flux are aligned. Supaya kita dapat minimiskan dia punya loss. Okay. Untuk make sure that the high efficient motors lah. Can be developed. Okay. Next. Now, uh, we move on to the second theory. Just now, for this law that describe the behavior of uh, transformer action. 
Now I'm going to talk about the uh, behavior of motor action. Okay, motor action. Eh? So uh, in this motor action, it is actually described by the production of induced force on a wire. Eh? Production of induced force on a wire. Imagine that there is a current carrying conductor. Current carrying conductor meaning that we have the conductor and we uh, apply some voltage so that current will be flowing inside that conductor. Okay, the current carrying conductor present in a uniform magnetic field uh, yang berada dalam medan magnet yang se sekata. Okay. Uh, uniform maksudnya medan magnet itu uh, dia bukan sahaja dari segi magnitude dia sama tetapi dari segi vector direction juga samalah uh, itu maksud uniform magnetic field with flux density of B it will produce a force to the conductor or wire ok ok so we can represent the force that is built up because of the uh, current flowing in the uh, wire that is placed inside the magnetic field is F equals to I L cross B. So this equation that describes the behavior of motor. Okay. So what is L? L represents the wire, the length of wire. Let's say my pen, eh, my stylus pen ini. Lebih kurang sejengkal macam tu. Dalam CM mungkin dalam uh, 15 cm kan. Uh, so panjang wire ni adalah 0.15 meter. Eh? 0.15 meter panjang. Okay. Uh, L adalah panjang wire tu. B adalah magnetic field lah. Berapa Tesla? 0.1 Tesla ke? 1 Tesla ke? 5 Tesla ke? B represents the magnetic field. Ini adalah cross product. Eh? Remember the vector cross product? Uh, previously in mechanics, we learn about vector dot product and vector cross product. So, for the cross product, supposed to be L cross B. For example, if we have L cross B, maksudnya F ni adalah product of L cross B. Subject to the magnitude of I lah. Okay? So, let's say I have this, this wire. Ini adalah magnitude of F. Okay. So, L cross B adalah di bawah dia. Okay. L. Hmm, nak tunjuk ya. Eh. Vector cross product. Saya akan, saya cuba lukis ya. Eh. Let's say, uh, let's talk about vector cross product. Apa itu vector cross product? Kalau saya ada vector, uh, vector B, uh, vector, katalah ini vector B. Okay, and then, ada satu lagi vector, iaitu vector A, which is A and B is perpendicular to each other. Okay, so how about cross product of A and B? Cross product of A and B, let's say, is C vector. So, what is the direction of the C vector? So, it is to that direction. So, this is C vector that is that is actually component A, component B and component C they are perpendicular to each other. C perpendicular to B maknanya 90 degree separated at right angle. Eh? And then C is also perpendicular to A and A is perpendicular to B. Like our jar, our fingers lah, huh? like right hand rule. Huh? Here you can use the right hand rule if you do it like this. Okay, exactly. We can, we can uh, confirm that huh? uh, jari ibu, ibu jari, the thumb, yeah, perpendicular to uh, jari telunjuk index finger. Huh? And then, index finger ke? Okay. Then, jari yang tengah ni, jari hantu, perpendicular to that, jari telunjuk. 
Begitu juga jari hantu perpendicular to the uh, jari ibu jari. So, kita boleh gunakan right hand rule to determine the direction of pada balik ah. We can do the, the right hand rule uh, to determine the direction of ini force induced. Huh? Force induced will be perpendicular direction to the I and B ataupun L. Sebenarnya uh, I ni kalau kita lalukan current daripada sini ke sini. Maknanya daripada right hand side to the left hand side to this direction. L juga huh? kita boleh estimatekan L ni sebenarnya ke arah sini juga ah sama dengan current. So L ni adalah panjang ah. Okay. Oops. So force is F I L B lah. Okay. So so we use right hand rule lah. Okay. And then we can also use the screw, okay, to determine the direction of F. For example, if I have this this figure, B is to that direction. Yang ni sebenarnya sama, yang ni ya. Ah. Figure, arah B. Kenapa pointer saya agak slow? Ah? Hari itu okey je, laju. Okey, tak apalah. Okey, if I have B to this direction and I to that direction and B and I or L is perpendicular. So, apa itu maksud L cross B? L cross B maksudnya dari L, start from L, cross. Okay, cross. L pergi kepada B. L pergi kepada B. If we use the screw, tahu tak screw kan? Tahu kan screw? Kalau kita gunakan screw lah. Screw, katalah screw plus kan. So, arah dia ke atas macam tu kan. Kalau kita nak pulas screw tu, bagi masuk. Kalau kita pulas clockwise direction, screw tu masuk kan. Kalau kita pulas counter clockwise direction, screw tu keluar. So, maksudnya sini sama. L cross B maksudnya, L cross B tu clockwise direction kan. L cross B clockwise direction. If we do clockwise direction of L and B, we can see that this screw is actually to upward direction lah. Maknanya itu adalah direction F. So, F is product of L cross B vector. Okay, cross product. Eh? Alright. So, remember... If F suddenly appears, that is motor action. Huh? F motor action, motor action. Huh? Ah, ini uh, explanation sama juga yang tadi. If we use the right hand rule, okay, easily we can determine the direction of F, huh? the resultant force. And similarly, uh, if you are confused uh, because you use Uh, tangan kan, kadang-kadang kita confuse tiba-tiba tertukar tertukar, mana motor, mana ni kan, bila awak buat, tiba-tiba awak silap, uh, dalam test ke dalam ni, bila buat macam ni mana satu motor, ha? motor kanan ke kiri, man? generator kanan ke kiri, so bila tertukar, tersilap ok, you can use uh, the concept or the uh, apa nama, dia punya petua je Uh, menggunakan skru tadi ya. Yeah? Okey. So if all of the vectors are perpendicular, maksudnya kalaulah F itu perpendicular dengan L, perpendicular dengan B, we can just assume that uh, using this equation lah. Huh? Tak ada lagi cross product ah. Huh? Direct saja I L B sin theta. Maksudnya kalau Uh, semua komponen itu at right angle, at 90 degree. Okay. Sin 90 degree is 1, right? So, directly, uh, we can just F, use F equals to ILB lah. Right? Okay. So, theta adalah sebenarnya angle 
uh, between the conductor and direction of the magnetic field. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, kalau tengok kat sini kan. Tita tu apa? Tita tu adalah uh, angle antara magnetic field punya direction dengan ni, wire punya direction. Eh? Okay. Tita is angle between conductor and the direction of the magnetic field. Oops. Ke mana dah hilang? Okay. Angle antara B dengan direction ni. So, angle antara ni dengan yang ni. 30 ataupun 90 darjah. Ha? Let's say, kalau lah, patutlah, wayar ni dia sengit sikit. Ha? Wayar ni dia bukan ke arah tu, tetapi ke arah ni. Then, uh, B juga ke arah ni. So, dia akan displace by theta. Ha? Angle akan jadi theta. Let's say, this theta is 30 degree. We can use sine 30 degree lah. Alright? Okay, faham eh? Next. ah Inilah explanation tadi lah. Uh, Komponen ni. Sebenarnya, semua semuanya perpendicular. Eh? If uh, the direction of uh, L is not perpendicular to the direction of B, Let's say L is now displaced at 30 degree. So simply we can uh, uh, use this equation and then theta becomes 30 degree lah. So so that uh, bila kita gunakan sine 30 degree, it is not 1. Huh? No longer 1 lah. Sine 90 degree baru 1. So sine 30 degree, it is actually realign. Huh? Realign that B to L. Maksudnya situ. Okay. So, it is a factorized value here to realign B so that B is perpendicular to L. Okay. Right. So, we have uh, tutorial questions. So, I think this is just a straightforward question that asks you uh, magnitude and direction of the force induced on that wire force already uh, dia tunjuk dah huh? arah force tu ke arah mana kan just you need to find the uh, magnitude lah, direction no need lah uh. so tutorial ni pun saya dah ada discussion dia dalam youtube channel ok ok so next tadi berkenaan dengan motor action ok motor action remember flashback eh uh, we have a wire, we supply the current through that wire and then I place this wire inside the magnetic field, the force will be acting on that wire. Okay, that is motor action. Now, I'm going to talk about the generator action. Huh? Generator action. So, what is generator action? So, it is about uh, induced voltage on a conductor moving in a magnetic field. There is no current mentioned here. Just now we have current ah, flowing in the uh, wire. Now, dia tak mention pasal current pun. Kita tak supply current pun that, to that wire. Maksudnya, let's say I'm holding this wire. What I do now is I try to move this wire inside the magnetic field. Inside the uniform magnetic field, I move this wire. Okay? What happens is this wire will cut through magnetic field. Dia akan potong uh, magnetic field itu. Menyebabkan uh, voltage build up across this wire. Okay? Menyebabkan voltage will be induced across or between the terminal of the conductor. Daripada hujung tu, hujung ni, voltage kan ada plus minus kan, positif, negatif. Maksudnya, positif itu direction of that voltage induced lah. Okay, so I I move this wire inside the magnetic, inside, inside the ma uniform magnetic field, voltage will be induced. And then, of course, of course, when I move this uh, wire, 
it is subject to the velocity of the movement lah. Okay. Kelajuan dia lah. Okay. So, velocity ada kat situ. So, we relate the velocity with the magnetic field and also the length of the wire. Oh, kalau tadi 15 cm ataupun 0.1 meter, uh, maksudnya sama lah. Length of the wire, uh, magnetic field punya magnitude. Okay. V is the direction. Uh. Jangan tertukar antara E in dengan V. E in represent voltage. Okay. V represent velocity. Bukan voltage. Eh? So, V is velocity. E in is voltage that is induced when we move that wire inside the magnetic field with that speed. Okay. With that speed. So, V is velocity of the wire. B is magnetic field density in Tesla. And then, L is the length of wire. So, remember the equation for generator action is E in. Okay. Equation for motor action is F. Huh? F, I, L, B. Untuk generator, E in, V, B, L. V cross B, L. So, sama macam tadi juga. Yang ni cross produknya antara V dengan B. Yang tadi, cross produknya antara L dengan B. Okay. So, L dengan B untuk motor, uh, untuk generator, cross product antara V dengan B. Okay. Then, uh, we can use cosine theta. <laughs> cosine theta now. Uh. Cosine theta now. Saya sambung now dengan theta tadi. Cosine theta. Okay, jadi macam tu. Cosine theta now. Uh, we have... Cosine theta that represent this equation which is generator action. Remember, for motor action, we use sine theta. Maknanya sine 90 degree is 1. Okay. Untuk yang ni, kalau yang ni 90 degree, maknanya kosong lah. Okay. Right. So, uh, let's see my uh, notes. Huh? Induce voltage on a conductor moving in the magnetic field, which is generator action. We can simply represent it like this. I have the wire here. Okay, wire ni. Uh, let's assume that there is no induced voltage yet. Tak ada lagi induced voltage. Eh? Voltage tak induced lagi. Sebab saya tak gerakkan dia lagi. And then direction of B is to that direction lah. Uh, all of the B to that direction. Okay. So now I move this wire. Daripada uh, from the page, from the paper to the, to my direction lah. Uh, to my direction. So saya gerakkan sebanyak velocity V. Okay. At that instant barulah voltage build up. That is Induce voltage E in. Okay. Ke mana arah induce voltage itu? Ke arah atas. Kenapa? Sebab V cross B. V cross B ni. Daripada V. Daripada titik tu. Kepada B kan. Remember. Kalau menggunakan screw. Okay. Kalau menggunakan screw. Kita pula screw tu. Clockwise direction means that. Ke arah masuk kan. Screw tu ke arah masuk. Maksudnya ke arah atas. Okay. If I have this screw. So that. Direction ke arah atas lah. Okay. Sebab saya pusing screw ni. Clockwise direction. Eh? Clockwise direction. Okay. If you prefer to use the left hand rule. Then. Just represent your thumb as V. B is the uh, direction of middle finger and induced voltage is the direction of the index finger. Like this. Okay. So, remember, you use left hand rule when we, you want to determine the direction of induced voltage. 
when we move the wire inside the magnetic field at the velocity of V. Alright? So, if V dengan B itu at right angle 90 degree, at right angle, we can just use this equation directly. So, if V B at right angle, we can use VBL. Okay. Maknanya kalau tadi uh, B ke arah sini, V ke arah sini, then uh, komponen V dengan B itu 90 degree. Okay. Direction atas. So, Kita boleh katakan E in goes to VB terus saja. Huh? VBL. Let's say now V cross B is no longer at right angle. I redraw that previous, uh, this previous uh, figure into another figure in page 24 ni. Okay. Let's say that uh, the direction of the movement of the wire is no longer perpendicular to B, okay? And the angle is 30 degree. At that point, we can just use that equation lah. E in equals to VBL cosine 90 degree. Okay, cosine 90 degree. Oh, sorry, cosine 30 degree, yeah? Okay, clear. Okay, so okay, kita dah masuk lima belas empat puluh lapan. So so far we have finished discussing about uh, Faraday's law, which is the fundamental concept uh, of the uh, transformer action, and then next I have talked about the. Uh, current carrying wire inside the magnetic field which is the fundamental concept of the motor action and then just now i've just finished the uh, my last section just now which is i have i was talking about the uh, generator action which is the induced voltage produced across the wire when we move the wire inside the magnetic field Okay, remember that three concept of uh, transformer action, generator action, and motor action itu uh, that can be represented by uh, ILB, VBL. Okay, so now uh, I'm later in this section, in this 1.7 section, I will further describe about how how we can uh, apply that equations. Force equation and induced voltage equation using this uh, simple representation of DC machine. Okay, so later uh, I will describe about this. We will discuss about this later. Let's have a break about uh, five minutes. Huh? So let's have a break about five minutes. If you have any question, you can ask. So we we break about five minutes. Uh, let me pause this recording. Um, okay, now we move on to discussion about a uh, linear DC machine. Okay, so in me uh, mechanics, in machine, electrical machines, uh, this is a simple representation of the circuit that uh, when we want to discuss about linear DC machine, we name it as linear DC machine circuit lah. Ni ya. Eh? Linear DC machine circuit. We have this uh, sort of circuit. Then uh, there is a reel. Macam uh, macam ada satu jalan lah. Macam ada satu reel lah. Kita letakkan satu uh, conducting bar ataupun conductor. Okay. We just put on this conductor on that two parallel reel, okay, 
so that uh, we can uh, describe uh, the behavior of a motor or generator in terms of uh, representation dalam bentuk linear decision machine ini. Eh. So linear decision machine is uh, something that is the simplest uh, representation of the decision machine which we can understand the operation of motor or generator by observing this uh, movement of the conductor. Okay, so let's say that the, this conductor will be moving toward left, uh, sorry, toward right hand, uh, right hand side. Eh? Daripada sini ke arah kanan, dia akan bergerak ke arah kanan saja. Dia tak pergi ke arah sini, eh? bar ni akan bergerak kepada ke arah kanan saja. Dan apa yang berlaku adalah uh, mesin ni akan represent sama ada uh, pergerakan itu ataupun that sort of uh, movement itu represent uh, motor action or the generator action. Okay. You can do experiment at home if you have battery, uh, resistor, some uh, resistor and then you make it uh, the wire like this. Uh, your circuit like this and put the wire and then have a magnet eh? maksudnya kalau B ini pangkah ke dalam kertas kan into the page eh? magnetic field into the page maksudnya B menghala ke dalam page lah ok so maksudnya kalau B menghala ke dalam page north pole dalam south pole kat luar ok south pole kat luar ok so direction of the flux is in such a way that uh, you can represent it like this Okay, let's see about the equation. Production of force on a current carrying conductor. Uh, this is not something which is hard to, to understand. Let me just uh, move on. Let me show you. Um, let me show you the notes that I have written here. Linear DC machine, okay. So this is the representation of linear DC machine, which is the same as what we see in the textbook one. Okay, so I have the battery uh, switch resistor and also the conducting bar. I place it on this reel. Okay, on these two parallel wire, I letakkan kat sini. And then di kawasan ini ada magnetic field lah, ada B. <coughs> So, things you need to remember is some equations that will be used in this uh, linear DC machine, uh, discussion on the linear DC machine, which is F equals to I L cross B, that represent the motor action, and then uh, the same thing, which is related to the generator action, using E in equals to V cross B L. And then also another thing is uh, for you to relate this using the uh, KVL ataupun Kirchhoff voltage law. Huh? If you use the Kirchhoff voltage law, we can represent B is sum of voltage across R and also voltage across this bar, okay? which is E in. So KVL. B maksudnya B sama dengan IR tambah dengan E in. Ataupun sebaliknya lah. E in sama dengan IR tambah VB. Itu bergantung. Eh? So, semasa motor action, VB ni akan jadi lebih besar daripada E in. So, bila VB lebih besar daripada E in, what we do is VB is on the left hand side lah. Uh, VB lagi besar kan? daripada E in. So, we be on the left hand side equals to IR plus E in. Okay. If during the generator action, meaning that induced voltage, bahagian load ini lebih besar berbanding dengan uh, bahagian uh, VB ataupun battery. So, we can re rearrange this equation if generator action simply we can write it like this. E in equals to IR plus VB. So, this is the generator. This is during the generator action. Eh? 
equation untuk KVL jadi macam tu. Equation untuk KVL during motor action. That one lah. Ha. So, jangan tertukar. Okay. And then, Newton second law lah. F equals to MA. Sebab ada movement kat sini kan. Ada... Uh, This bar will be moving if we supply current through it and this is inside the magnetic field it will induce force and then it will be moving to uh, basically using the uh, left hand rule or right hand rule uh, generator or motor action tu kita dapati dia akan biasanya uh, kalau ikut arrangement ini dia akan bergerak ke arah kanan lah ke arah tu ok ke arah ni Okay. So, itu antara equation-equation yang terlibat lah bila kita discuss about uh, linear design machine. So, next is starting the DC machine. The linear DC machine. Okay. Yang ni yang tadi lah uh, equation-equations that we use when we want to describe about linear DC machine. Eh? The phenomenon uh, behind the linear DC machine. For example, yang paling penting yang ni lah. Huh? Equation Kirchhoff Voltage Law ini. Kalau motor action, kita guna equation ni. Huh? Kita guna equation ni. Ini adalah motor action. Huh? B sentiasa lebih besar daripada induced voltage across the bar. Kalau generator action, E in akan lebih besar daripada VB. Maksudnya E in equals to IR plus VB. Okay, so basically, <coughs> okay, ini daripada textbook lah. If you can see that ada F in that represent the induced force, uh, the induced force, and V represent the velocity. Jangan tertukar antara V dengan E in. V represent velocity that is about movement of this bar to that direction at V. At speed of V. Linear speed ni. Linear speed. Ha, bukan ang, bukan omega uh, rotational. Bukan. We are talking about linear DC machine. Hmm? Linear DC machine representation. So, I'm talking about V which is linear movement of this bar. And voltage pula represent by the E in ni. Okay. So, now I'm going to talk about starting linear DC machine. Bila kita nak start tu, which means that we 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 turn on ataupun we close this switch so that uh, current will be flowing through this wire, okay, back to the battery. Okay, current will be flowing which is because uh, uh, it becomes the closed circuit. Eh? Closed circuit so that current will be flowing clockwise direction. Saya harap betul lah saya sebut clockwise direction meaning that apa yang you nampak daripada daripada monitor kat sana pun clockwise lah. Saya takut nanti bila dia ni macam ni tangan kanan ke tangan kiri ya? Evon. Ni tangan kanan ke kiri? Nampak dari screen kiri tapi kalau in real world, dia akan naik. Oh, nampak dari skrin kiri ya? Ah, saya, cuba saya flip ya. Eh. Sekejap lah. Takkan kot. Uh, sekejap. Saya nak cuba flipkan. Oops, sorry. Uh, mana setting dia? Setting kamera. Sekejap lah. Eh. Saya stop sharing sekejap. Nampak tak? Ni. Oh, sorry. Uh, saya nak share dulu ni Windows ni. Alamak. Bila saya share dia terkeluar macam tu lah. Okay. Cuba saya flipkan. Stop sharing sekejap. Saya tukar settings ni. setting. Kalau saya flipkan 
sekarang ni saya flip ya. So saya flip then saya share. So sekarang ni uh, tangan ni tangan kiri ke kanan ni nampak? Nampak dari screen kiri. Nampak dari screen kiri. Hmm. Oh kalau you flip kan tangan ni tangan kanan lah. Ni sebenarnya tangan kanan lah. Ya, yeah, I know doctor. Okay, you know. Uh, so saya back to the uh, the original setting lah. Saya tak payah tak payah flip lah. Kat mana tadi start settings dia. So saya tak nak flip flip. So this is the setting. So nampak tak? Ni tangan kanan. Okey, ni tangan kiri. Betul? Ya, saya tahu. Tapi kalau ha. nampak dah screen memang dia flip. Ah, uh, memang dia flip. Ya. Kalau saya buat macam ni, clockwise ke anti-clockwise? Kalau nampak dari sini, anti-clockwise. Ah, uh, sebenarnya ni clockwise. Saya buat ni clockwise direction. Ikut jump. Kalau yang ni, anti-clockwise. Kami nampak uh, clockwise. Yang ni nampak clockwise? Ya. Yeah. Ah. So make sure that uh, ikut apa yang saya cakap lah. Saya so, macam ni clockwise direction lah. So just uh, kalau you tengok kat sini you nampak ah ikut yang you nampak. Hmm penting juga ah saya pun penting ah. You 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 can confuse lah betul tak? Because of uh, social eyes. Tapi kalau lukis di itu saya rasa okay je. Ah, kalau lukis ok je ok so better I share and then uh, saya contoh-contoh dekat saya punya canvas lah right uh, so now uh, saya nak share sekali lagi ok starting the linear DC machine next slide to start the machine we close the switch ok to start the machine we close the switch ok This is the uh, the the initial condition. We don't close the switch yet. So there is no close circuit. Huh? Tak ada no complete circuit, right? If you don't close this switch. Once we close this switch, as you can see here, so it becomes the closed circuit. Okay, litar yang lengkap, right? And then, as usual. If we have the closed circuit like this, then we have some resistance, right? So current will be flowing. Okay, biar kita ada load je, current akan uh, flow through this resistor and then pass this uh, conducting bar. Dia sebab dia bersambung ah, dia akan jadi bersambung and then dia akan mengalir masuk balik ke bateri. So, in this case, it is clockwise direction lah. The flow of current, clockwise direction. So, let's say, during starting condition, meaning that, when we talk about, when we talk about starting condition, just assume that this current is not yet arrived to this bar. Maksudnya, at the instant of switching, current akan current will be flowing right and then let assume that uh, there is no voltage induced or no current inside this bar current baru sampai kat sini je okay that is the instant of switching okay so we can use the kirchhoff voltage law and then since uh, this part is still zero then we can directly represent VB equals to IR. That is during the instant of switching. Ya. Okay, saya tak masuk lagi bila current tu mengalir dalam uh, conducting bar yang berada dalam magnet. Tak, tak pergi kat situ lagi. Just at the instant of switching, we can uh, calculate the current by using VB over R. Alright? And then after some time, 
the current will be flowing through this R and then move inside okay and then flowing inside this bar daripada atas ke bawah and then this bar is now placed inside the magnetic field so from our big, uh, uh, earlier discussion just now when uh, current is flowing inside the conducting wire and then this wire is placed inside the magnetic field what happen is using right hand rule okay we can determine the direction of the force that will be induced huh, because of this current okay so maknanya bar ini akan experience some force action huh, to right direction okay so at that instant we can represent this machine this uh, dc machine as a motor okay we can represent this linear dc machine at this situation using uh, this equation which is motor action so f yang yang induced by the bar ni can be represented by using i l cross p lah. so since every, every component here f perpendicular to direction of i or l <coughs> and also perpendicular to b so we can directly use this equation f equals to i l b okay so that is how we determine the f lah so f then after that okay after that nampak tak daripada f ini bila dia start bergerak dia akan ada bila dia bergerak of course akan ada speed lah the, this bar will increase its speed of movement that the speed is represented by V to the same direction of F, okay? So, meaning that velocity increase. So, it start from stationary and then because of the current flowing, then it will be induced to the right hand side direction, okay? And then the speed will be, adalah, okay? Ada speed kat situ, it will increase the speed. Okay, so as the force increase, so this bar will be moving at speed of V, and then when the bar increase its speed, uh, now masuk pula uh, generator action pula kan? Generator action punya equation, which is induced voltage. Bila bar ni bergerak dalam medan magnet, okay? Imagine that we, we when we have a, a conducting bar, we move it inside the magnetic field. What happen is voltage will be induced. Maksudnya, pada masa yang sama, at this instant, we have V and then F, kan? Pada masa yang sama, and then we have current also flowing inside this bar. Okay, pada masa yang sama, voltage also will be induced across that bar. Okay? And then, dia akan bergerak lagi. <coughs> Imagine that uh, this is the speed versus time. Eh? Contohnya, the speed versus time. Okay? Mula-mula, dia akan increase the speed. Betul tak? Dia naik. Then, after some time, dia akan sampai ke constant speed. This is VSS. Okay. Maksudnya, itu, it will increase the speed until sometime it will reach the steady state speed, which is VSS. Bila? Bila steady state speed itu berlaku? Apabila tak ada lagi current. Mula-mula current banyak kan? Current banyak. Dia akan push dan bergerak dengan halju V. Bila halju V, Dia akan potong magnet menyebabkan voltage induce. And then, bila dia sampai satu masa, uh, speed tu menjadi VSS. Steady state speed. Maksudnya, pada masa tu dah berlaku state of equilibrium. Maksudnya, balance. Huh? Balance uh, between uh, sebelah kiri dan sebelah kanan. Huh? Maksudnya, uh, no more acceleration. No more acceleration. Acceleration is zero. Okay. Which is 
uh, speed is now constant. Ini berlaku apabila uh, saya bagi contoh apabila kita menggunakan hand drill. Siapa tak kenal hand drill? Apabila kita menggunakan hand drill. Power tools lah. Power tools lah. Let's say, if you use hand drill. Ha, power tools macam ni. Kita, kan rumah saya ada satu. Dalam ni ada motor tau. DC motor. DC motor lah. Sebab ni ada bateri kat bawah ni. Ada DC motor kat sini. Dan ada elektronik sikit lah. Okay. Bila kita tekan ni, dia akan pusing. At that instant of switching, switching itu, uh, shaft ni akan berpusing, ok, clockwise direction lah, kalau, kalau kan, depends lah, kalau kita nak unscrew, dia counter clockwise, bila kita nak screw in, dia akan pusing clockwise direction. Dia akan start <coughs> dengan initial speed, sampailah bila kita tekan tu, dia last kali dia akan stay at its uh, constant speed. Okay, macam tu. Okey, itu maksudnya. Itu adalah steady state speed. Okey, steady state speed. Apabila drill tu, uh, bila dia dalam keadaan steady state speed, adalah katalah ada dinding kat sini kan. Saya pun ada screw kat dinding tu, saya nak screw kan dia. Bila hujung shaft itu sentuh saja screw itu, maksudnya kita kenakan load. Kita kenakan load. So, apa yang berlaku pada steady state speed tadi? Steady speed, state speed tadi akan berkurangan. Maknanya, bila ada load, of course lah. Dia akan kurang. Dia akan decrease its speed. Because of the load. Okay. Uh, to analogy, uh, itulah explanation in terms of uh, using the power tools. What happen uh, when we uh, start uh, the switch and then... Uh, the shaft will be uh, moving or the bar will be moving up to the steady state speed tadi. Mana dah? Okay, bila dia capai steady state speed, when it reach the steady state speed, meaning that at that instant, Induced voltage will be equals to battery voltage. The balance lah. Okay. Induced voltage will be equals to battery voltage. Yeah, when it, it is arrived to its steady state speed, induced voltage akan sama dengan battery voltage. Maksudnya, kita gunakan VBL which is V is VSS now, we can determine the steady state speed lah by using VB divided by BL. Or if in the question given uh, induced voltage, also you can use this equation E in divided by BL lah. E meter per second lah. Okay, that is the situation up to the steady state speed. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk about uh, the motor action. <coughs> okay, for the motor action, so basically using the same uh, linear DC machine, let's say that this motor is running at no load speed. Okay, this motor is running at no load speed. Uh, tadi, uh, yang ni ada explanation dia lah berkenaan dengan yang tadi ya. Eh. Uh, starting the DC machine tadi ya eh, daripada uh, speed dia eh, with respect to time dia dia naik dan dia akan constant pada masa ni ada constant speed lah ataupun steady state speed begitu juga dengan current asalnya current tu banyak dalam bar tu kan so bila ada induced voltage induced voltage makin naik dekat bar tu uh, current dalam bar tu semakin berkurang ok, okay. pada masa ni at this state Uh, dia dah sama uh, induce voltage sama dengan uh, VB uh, induce voltage sama dengan VB ok, begitu juga dengan induce force ni, berkurang lah itu tadi, untuk explanation tadi lah, uh, ini berkenaan dengan si motor, ok 
So we have this uh, the same uh, circuit, linear distribution circuit here. So uh, let's say that this machine is at the steady state speed. Eh? Maksudnya, uh, benda ni sedang bergerak. Eh? Bar ni sedang bergerak ke arah kanan. Okay. And then, seperti yang saya tunjuk tadi, eh, bila kita gunakan hand drill tadi, dalam keadaan dia tengah berhusing tu, okay, saya pun kenakan load. Saya nak screwkan pada pada dinding lah. Okay. Saya kenakan load. Apabila saya kenakan load, of course, uh, force of load is different direction to the induced force. Okay. Maknanya, <coughs> yang ni akan dikenakan ke arah yang berlawanan so that apa yang berlaku is uh, this steady state speed will be decreasing. Menjadikan another speed. Okay. Okay. So, if we apply load, okay, if we apply load to the different direction of the induced force tadi, of the direction of V, which is the velocity, what happen is... <coughs> Uh, apabila sampai satu masa dia akan mencapai F net eh? F net iaitu F net ini uh, adalah F load minus F in mana uh, bila kita kenakan hendri tu bila kena, kenakan load net force is let's say F load is larger than induced force Meaning that F net is to that direction lah. The direction the same as ni F net lah. The direction same to the F load. Okay. That will be represented by this equation. <coughs> And then, pada satu-satu masa, uh, bila kita kenakan load, the bar will decrease its speed. We slow down its speed. Maksudnya daripada VSS itu, bila dia, kita kenakan F load tadi, ke arah sini F load kan? Bila kita kenakan F load, VSS will decrease its speed, which is deceleration, up to another speed, which is V prime. V prime here. Okay. And then, At this instant, uh, tadi daripada steady state speed, current tak ada dalam bar tu. Apabila kita uh, uh, kenakan load, motor action, akan ada current. Okay. This current will be increased so so that the force also will be increased lah. That is the F load. After some time, dia akan mencapai satu tahap di mana uh, induced force is balanced eh, to the load force. Okay. Pada masa ni lah, dia akan ada new steady state speed. Which is VSS prime ini supposed to be uh, smaller than VSS tadi lah. Okay. Bila dia tengah pusing, preng, kan? Kita kenakan load. Of course, speed dia akan berkurangan. Lah, sebab dia nak tebuk lubang ataupun nak uh, screw kan, kan? Okay, pada masa yang sama. Bila dia dah steady tu. Uh, speed, uh, steady state speed tu yang baru adalah lebih kecil daripada steady state speed yang masa no load. Okay. Ini steady state, state speed that it achieve under load. Alright. Okay, itu dia punya explanation lah untuk figure ni. Eh. Okay, ada uh, further explanation you can read which is the same as what I have explained earlier. Okay, in terms of uh, graph, okay, we can represent it like this. Yeah, during uh, uh, when the linear DC machine uh, working as a motor. Okay, so the steady state speed kat sini. Okay. Steady state speed kat sini, bila kita kenakan load, <coughs> bila kita kenakan load, dia akan, speed dia akan berkurangan lah. Sehinggalah dia constant balik. Okay. 
So ini VSS yang asal, ini bahagian ni VSS prime ya. Begitu juga dengan VB, bateri punya voltage. Okey. Asalnya VB then it will decrease. Okey. Ini uh, induce force versus time. Induce force versus time ya. Eh? Sampai satu masa, load punya force sama dengan F in, induce force. Okay. Load punya force sama dengan induce force. And then we can uh, also, this this one is about uh, how we can convert uh, from mechanical power to electrical power for this sort of linear machine, linear DC machine. <coughs> So, electrical power, conversion to mechanical power. Okay. For motor, it is about electrical power that convert to the mechanical power. Okay. Because we supply the current. And then, it is the electrical power, which is can be represented by using E in times I. P equals to V I. Ingat ya. So, ini adalah electrical power converted into mechanical power which is uh, in linear motion linear motion uh, we can uh, represented by uh, induced force times v uh. fv ingat uh. mechanical power electrical power okay conversion from electrical power to mechanical power ini dalam vector uh, dalam mechanics ada ni uh. Okay, so this is this is about a linear DC machine. Eh? Kalau in rotational machine, rotating machinery, we can represent the mechanical power using this equation, which is torque times the angular velocity. But ini rotational, eh? rotational. So we can represent F. Eh? Force is analogous to torque. Eh? Force is analogous to torque. Kalau linear, F lah, force. Kalau rotating machinery, like motor, generator, in actual condition, uh, we represent by torque times angular velocity. Okay. That's it. Okay. And then generator action. Okay. Tadi, motor action. Now, generator action. So, what happened uh, for the generator action? Initially, machine is at no load condition. Okay. Maksudnya tadi, uh, V ni sebenarnya VSS. Eh? They are travelling with VSS. What happened is here, I apply force to the same direction to V. Maknanya dia bergerak dengan VSS. Saya tolak dia lagi, bagi lagi laju. Bagi lagi laju. Okey? Bagi lagi laju, apa yang berlaku? Berlakulah pemotongan medan magnet. Kan? Berlakulah pemotongan medan magnet. So that uh, ada voltage build up. Ada voltage build up. Huh? So direction of the voltage build up is to up. Huh? Upward direction meaning that this instant okay uh, apa yang berlaku what happen is uh, when we increase the force to uh, the same direction of v the speed of this bar the voltage will be induced so that this voltage is now larger than battery voltage okay induced voltage is larger than the battery voltage and then Current is now flowing from this side, the bar side, to the battery, which is counterclockwise direction. Ini. Right? So, until uh, applied force is equals to induced force, until uh, the equilibrium state, the balance state. Okay? okay? Yang ni adalah generator action lah. So, ingat ah. Eh? 
So generator action suppose induced voltage is larger than Vb. For the motor motor action just now, for the motor action Vb is larger than E in. Okay, so Vb is larger than E than E in. So generator action until it is in equilibrium state or steady state okay we found that uh, applied force is now uh, equals to the induced force okay so this is the steady state condition and then uh, when it achieve the new steady state condition meaning that the new vss is now bigger than the uh, no load VSS kan betul tak ok sebab kita tolak dia ke arah yang sama so that dia increase speed lah sampai lah dia sampai new VSS <coughs> so the machine is now converting the mechanical power to electrical power which is the generator action so in that case we can simply relate the energy conversion concept from mechanical power to electrical power lah. Okay. So the same thing applies which is very similar to the previous equation that we relate the uh, mechanical uh, power in terms of rotating machinery. Eh? Ini, ini untuk case bagi rotating machinery which is tau omega. Sama juga lah. Eh? So, mechanical power can be represented by tau omega. So, daripada tau omega ni, kita convert kepada electrical power. V times I. Okay. So, habis kat situ. Habis lah. Okay. Just. Uh, uh, so, the same explanation actually you can read. Adalah satu lagi last ah. Eh? Starting problems with linear distribution. This is actually described about uh, uh, when we start the machine, the electrical machine. What happen is a large amount of current will be drawn from the battery. Large amount of current will be drawn from the battery. Uh, that results in uh, macam-macam lah. Contohnya akan berlaku spark. Hmm? Spark. Uh, ataupun uh, spark lah macam spark plug eh? macam spark plug pernah tengok lah spark plug dia akan keluar api kan uh, disebabkan large amount of current uh, sebab tu kalau awak guna power tools pun bila kita tekan tu dia nampak macam ada api kan? because of large amount of current that api sebenarnya datang daripada brush eh? the contact eh? the brush so bila ada contact kat situ dia akan berlaku macam sentuh tak sentuh macam tu so bila berlaku tu uh, dia tak stable dan uh, bila ada large amount of current dia akan menyebabkan spark <coughs> so basically in motor or generator uh, when we initially start this switch let's say uh, this amount of uh, resistor here will produce large amount of current using this equation I start ni sampailah sehingga 2500 amps ah kalau kita menggunakan uh, yang tadi based on that circuit i start is large enough until it reach 2500 ampere uh, yeah. sangat besarlah ni okay so in starting problem uh, basically we can mitigate uh, kita boleh mitigate the problem with starting by using uh, arc start ataupun the resistor that we insert in uh, series to the uh, internal resistance of the battery or supply lah, ok so, bila ada nada resistance kat sini, kita boleh limitkan lah lagi current dia uh, so that it can lower down the current, the initial current that is produced when we start the machine ini yang berlaku dalam real world situation Maksudnya contoh, eh? uh, dekat UMT, <coughs> lecturer masuk dalam bilik, bilik dia, 
katalah pukul 8 ok so pukul 8 Q semua dah, tiba-tiba masuk dalam uh, bilik masing-masing dan kami switch on the aircon pada masa yang serentak semua pukul 8 semua pakat switch on the aircon ha? bila kita switch on the aircon maksudnya kita uh, dia ada motor kan indoor unit outdoor unit ada motor ada mesin so bila kita switch on akan berlaku instantaneous, instantaneous amount of current very large amount of current instant Continuously uh, drawn by the motor. Okay, what happen is at that instant, sangat besar uh, power akan digunakan pada satu-satu masa. Okay, bila pakat-pakat masuk pukul 8, masing-masing switch on, aircon, apa yang berlaku. At that instant, pada pukul 8 itu, kalau ke- tengok <coughs> graf tenaga ataupun graf power, okay, uh, dia akan naik dia akan ada peak then baru dia stabil dia stabil balik lah, ikut load lah ok, so pada masa tu lah sebenarnya in term in terms of energy management energy efficiency of the building ok, biasanya kita nak elakkan daripada kita switch on, especially aircon lah yang menggunakan current yang banyak pada masa yang sama kita tak nak switch on aircon pada masa yang sama untuk me- mengelakkan peak itu. Kenapa kita nak elak tu sebab <coughs> dalam uh, TNB punya billing ya. TNB punya billing ni saya relatekan dengan real life situation lah. Dalam TNB punya billing dia ada tarif, okey. Tarif yang dikenakan atas sebab kita menggunakan current yang terlalu banyak. <coughs> dia panggil maximum demand ha? katalah rate untuk penggunaan uh, tenaga untuk biasa katalah uh, 50 sen tapi <coughs> bila berlaku maximum demand so bila kita melepasi threshold maximum demand itu tenaga yang digunakan pada masa itu akan menggunakan rate lain kita bayar dengan harga yang lain contohnya RM1 per kilowatt hour ha, itulah yang berlaku ha? Apa, yang disebabkan oleh Uh, a large kita panggil in rush current a large in rush current when we start uh, when we start the motor uh, during starting of the electrical machine ok so in summary in summary uh, basically two things uh, that you, you you have to remember that when we talk about generator ok when we talk about generator it is actually the situation where uh, induced voltage at the bar will be larger than battery voltage ok so at this particular instant using the generator action the current will be flowing from bar to the motor eh, sorry from bar to the battery ok and then for the situation where uh, the linear DC machine is working as a motor okay for that situation battery voltage is larger than the induced voltage meaning that the current is now flowing from battery to the bar okay itu uh, don't be confused with that eh? I will talk about motor action, generator action, using linear DC machine. I hope that you can understand uh, the situation. You can differentiate uh, the situation of uh, in terms of current flowing, in terms of uh, the magnitude of voltage and the battery voltage. Okay. <clears throat> so I think we have finished all uh, syllabus that is related to chapter 1. So we have discussed all of the sections in the chapter 1 okay uh, and then if as you can see there is another tutorial uh, that's based on the uh, linear DC machine question where you can uh, have a try so and then another tutorial based on the based on the problem uh, 1-21 from Chapman's and I put uh, the answer as well here so 
you can uh, always follow the YouTube channel that discuss all of this uh, tutorial question. And then if you have any question, then uh, just let me know, ask me. Uh, if you are confused with the tutorial that I've uh, done the recording in YouTube. So basically, uh, uh, this chapter finish up to this up to this week lah. Ni ini week yang ketiga from uh, this Thursday. This Thursday maybe uh, I will highlight some uh, questions so that we can discuss lah. Uh, so that we can discuss. I will like will highlight some uh, question maybe can discuss later and then uh, I will start discussing about uh, chapter 2 in the following weeks uh, in next week okay so 16 1651 so do you have any question Any further questions? Huh? No. No. No question. Thank you, Evan. Okay. So, uh, kita habiskan dah awal 10 minit. Eh. Hujung screw refer to induce voltage ke? Ya. Yeah. Hujung screw. Uh, hujung screw tu uh, plus. Huh? Hujung screw tu plus. Uh, kepala screw tu minus lah. Uh, kalau kita ketatkan skru, kalau kita loosening the screw, uh, kepala skru tu jadi, akan jadi plus. So, uh, vo induce voltage direction now change. Uh, okay, itu uh, menjawab soalan yang tulis dalam chat oleh Atirah. So, <coughs> so finish lah ha. Huh? So that you can uh, go into another session, the class. Okay, so we finish up to this time for today's session.